So now that we defined, uh, that we created a model for the uh, make versus buy problem, let's solve it in Excel. So, so I have created here an empty Excel spreadsheet and I just as before I put the model here at the bottom of the screen so we can so we can still use it, we remember uh, how it looks. And now we can um, solve it in Excel. So uh, as before, we have to first create space for all decision variables. If uh, re remember there is a total of six of them, three make variables and three buy variables. Now there are two ways of organizing here, at least two ways I can I can tell you about. So I'm going to show you in this episode the first version, this is called Electropoly V1, uh, version 1 uh, of organizing the model and I'm, uh, I'm going to put uh, in, in this Excel model the variables as follows. I'm going to have model 1 all model 1 values, uh, values for model 1 in this column, here model 2 and here model 3, right? So this will be three uh, columns. And here I will put units to make and units to buy, right? And this will be decision variables here, the six cells, right? So I'll mark them with the yellow color and notice this is M1, M2, M3 and here there is B1, B2, B3, right? So I have six variables in total that define how many units we make, how many units we buy, right? Now we need to define uh, the objective function which is the total cost but for that we need the costs, right? I'm going to leave some space here, um, three lines because I remember that I will have to enter something here. Um, I will define here costs to make and costs to buy, okay? Now again as before it's a good idea to to write those costs, uh, type them in separate cells, 50, 83, sometimes you can just copy paste them from the model, 61, 97 and 145, I think I entered them correctly, so these are the costs and notice I'm still keeping the same format, for model 1, model 2, model 3 costs are under the corresponding variables, right? Uh, so actually this table has exactly the corresponding format. Now in order to compute the total cost, I will say here total cost and I will put here a, a function which will compute it and notice that um, this is just multiplying those coefficients by those variables. It can be uh, uh, achieved by using the sum product function. In this case, uh, you know, the, the arrays are two-dimensional but they will still work, right? So if I specify the arrays this way, this is one and this is the second, the result will be sum of the products, products uh, means mu multiplications of those numbers and corresponding numbers in this table, right? I don't need to put the, uh, the dollars here because I'm not going to copy this function anymore, so I will just close parentheses and I'll see if it works. Let me mark it also with the color that I will be using for all the formulas and let's test it, right? It's a good idea to test. So if I make one unit of model 1, is the cost 50? Yes, it is, right? The empty cells are the same as 0. If I additionally buy one unit of model 3, then is that non 194? Yes, it is, because it's 50 plus 145. It looks like the model is working. Let me leave those values for the time being. Okay, now uh, what we need to ensure is that now define is the constraints, and the constraints say number of units we make or buy of each model have to be equal to uh, w whatever the number was ordered, right? So M1 is here. B1 is here and we want to add those two and have this total equal to 3000. If you notice, uh, you know, it's a good idea to put the sum of the column at the end of the column, right? So I could say here total units and then put here um, this plus this or even better, right? Uh, use the sum function. Sum function has the advantage that whatever the number of cells in the range, they will all be added, all be added so it's easier for large arrays to write it like this, sum b2, b3, right? And so I'll define this, I'll change the color, and yes, it is the sum is at the moment 1, and I can copy this formula 
and paste it here and you will see I get a correct sum and correct sum here, right? So total units and now I want to enter here below what is the number of ordered units. Ordered units, I will enter this as 3000, 2000 and 900, right? So now we know what did we enter. We have the variables, we have the total cost calculation and we have total units that we make or buy and we have the values to which these should be equal. So we have everything up to the this constraint. We're still missing the, the two constraints which is hours of wiring and hours of harnessing and I will enter them here. So I will put here hours of wiring and hours of harnessing and uh, and I will put the per unit hours. So this is 2, 1, this is 1.5, 2, and this is 3, 1. And then I will compute here the number of used total hours, right? Total hours used. And I will put here available hours. Right? So the total hours used will be will be what? 2 times m1, 1.5 times m2, and 3 times m3. So it's really a sum product again. And I can select these parameters, comma, and uh, make variables. Only make variables, remember, not buy variables in this case, right? Again, I will actually press at this moment F4 to change those references that it is. To, to absolute references because I will have exactly the same constraint for harnessing and harnessing should also use the make variables not the buy variables because we use harnessing capacity when we make not when we buy. So now I'll close this and let's see the number of hours that are used is two and that is correct because now with this solution we're making only one unit of model one we take two hours for this unit and that means total is and if I now copy this and paste it here, I will see that the sum product is referencing the correct correct uh, cells. It is taking these parameters, hours of wire harnessing per unit times the number of units of models 1 to 3. It's calculating now correctly that one hour of harnessing is used. I can now enter the 10,000 and 5,000 hours of wiring and harnessing available and we have the implementation ready. Now the last step is of course to solve this problem. So I'll go to data, I'll go to solver. I have already enabled previously the solver and I will now select the objective. So the, to the objective is the total cost. I will have to now remember to select to minimize it. If you forget about this, you will be actually maximizing the total cost instead of minimizing. I will. I want to mi or minimize this total cost by playing with these variables. So I have to select here a range, including all make and buy variables, and I will put the constraints. And again, instead of defining constraints one by one, I will define them in groups. I will say total units we make. All these three cells have to be. In this case, I have to select equal, and then select in the constraint right hand side these three numbers. So what this means is that each of the numbers in the first range has to be equal to each of the numbers uh, to the respective number in the right in the uh, second range, right? Uh, I can click add to continue adding the constraints. I have I have hours of wiring and harnessing have to be less than or equal to hours of uh, wiring and harnessing available. Add. And then I have to also say these all these variables right as in the model are greater than or equal to and I put the constant zero which is the only constant allowed in this uh, um, inside the the Excel solver add-in dialog box so now I will click OK even though I'm adding this constraint I don't want to add the next one click OK right uh, I will remove the main unconstrained variables non-negative um, uh, restriction I have the non-negativity here uh, I will change the solver to simplex LP as before uh, I indicated uh, right because we, we were solving a linear problem we can use a better method uh, before I click solve notice that all those constraints that I enter based on this Excel model uh, they are they have all corresponding constraints in 
they, they have corresponding constraints in the mathematical model. So you can also check, did I add all the constraints? Do I have those equalities? Yes, I have them here. Do I have those two less than or equal for hours of wiring, wiring and harnessing? Yes, they are here. And do you have the non-negativities? Yes, they are here. The objective is selected. It is minimization as in the mathematical model. The decision variables are made by for three models as in the mathematical model, right? So there is a one-to-one uh, -one correspondence between mathematical model and Excel model. Now I will uh, click solve and as before read the message, solver found the solution, all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. So I can click now OK and I can see which units are made and which units are bought. And as you can see, model 1 and model 3, all of the units of these two models are made. However, for model 2, uh, um, is only 550 units are made and the remaining ones are bought. And if you expect that, for example, that model 1 will be uh, outsourced rather than model 2 or 3, uh, then you see it is, it is not the case for the lowest cost, which is in this case $453,300. The, the, um, the, uh, 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 the solution is to make uh, everything of model 1 and model 3 and as much as we can of model 2 and then the remaining 1,450 units to buy model two. Uh, why are we actually outsourcing? Why are we buying uh, those units? Why aren't we making them? If you look now at the resource constraints here, number of uh, hours used and available and compare them, you will see we still have some hours of wiring, but we've li reached the limit on hours of harnessing. We're using 5,000 and we have 5,000 hours, right? So you can see here is that, the, that because of the way things worked, hours of harnessing uh, happened to be the restriction that that was uh, that was actually forcing us to to make the decision to make uh, only f this many units of model two and buy the rest. Okay, so uh, it happened that hours of wiring were really not the strongest restriction. It's hours of harnessing that was the strongest restriction, right? So uh, if you recall, we had the the order was worth seven right uh, revenue was $750,000. So we can now say profit is revenue minus cost. We might have additional costs. So we were able to make some profit this way. And of course, by minimizing the cost, we're actually maximizing this, this profit.